They are very cute, Taylor. I'm pretty sure you'll love to see these little ones. And by the time Taylor gets back, they should be moving around, hopefully, quite close to the Pride or at least coming to a few carcasses. And I'm sure Taylor is going to look forward to coming and seeing the Nkuma Pride females. I know she loves lions and particularly the Nkuma Pride. So I'm sure she's super excited to see them. I remember when we first got news of them, her and I went out to try and find where the den was. And we spent hours with the Pride and she was bouncing off the walls at the prospect of little Inkuhuma cubs. So I'm sure she's going to be happy to hear that they are healthy and well. But they've been quite feisty with one another. There's been a little bit of fighting and carrying on. I've moved slightly just so we can try get maybe a little bit of a clearer view. But as you can see, it not, didn't really work out as much as I wanted it to. It's difficult to get to where they are. I don't want to get any closer than what we are now. We're pretty much about, I would say, 15, 20 meters away. So... It's perfect distance, and the little ones are completely unperturbed by our presence. Even when I came in, I was just checking just to see how they would react because I went over one stump, and it didn't make too much of a noise, but it was just to see how they would react to that branch under the tire, and they didn't even flinch. They just carried on feeding. They looked at me maybe for one second and then carried on. So it really is quite cool to see that they have kind of already accepted vehicles or two, so to speak, and because mom is chilled, well, then they are chilled, which is good news. But how cute are these little things? Look at the tiny paws. I was hoping when they repositioned like that we'd hear some squeaking and that's why I was keeping quiet is just to see if we heard the little lion cub squeaks because it's the best sound in the world when they make that noise. It really is super cute. But like I say, you can see all three heads were there at one point, which is good news. Oh, you guys are super cute. You're going to be very 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 sweet in the next couple of weeks we're going to get some amazing sightings i can feel it already the nice thing is that she's denning really in the heart of juma we're right in the center we're far north i suppose up against the buffalo boundary but we're in the center of the property so even if she moves them i would imagine it's going to be south and north of these areas or along these drainage lines exactly where the pride den last year and so we should have these little cubs at least for the next couple of weeks which is fantastic news and now that they're getting a little bit bigger and a little stronger and they're moving around at least means that we are able to at least check for them a lot more and you can see they're busy grooming mom's face oh <laughs> how cute is that i know it's obscured but it's still super cute a little groom from the cubs So, Jake, you're asking if the rest of the Pride would ever reject her cubs. No, um, they wouldn't. Uh, she will be very careful about introducing them. Obviously, we know that she has introduced them already, and, and the Pride does know about them and has met them and has greeted them and the sub-adults. Um, so none of them have rejected, but uh, no, it doesn't really happen like that. Um, you sometimes find, though, that females, when they have especially in big prides when they have their cubs will often just break off and not go to that pride because the little ones get a bit bullied by those older ones and they get a little bit of kind of mistreated and roughly handled and that means that it's a little bit tougher but look at them grooming it's incredible to think that that line is that's her eye that we're seeing there and her nose so those cubs are about the size of her head and it's crazy to think that if they are females they'll end up one day that size or if they're males even bigger it's incredible to think how much they grow from these tiny little balls of fluff oh, and look at it grooming mom with a little tongue it's so sweet we're being spoiled with baby animals this morning Philip, um, in terms of teats that lionesses have, they have four, um, and in terms of average litters, it's actually, the average litter is four cubs, we very seldom will get two, it's, it, that's not really that common, it's more four, and they will have four teats, um, I have seen litters of seven, seven is the most lions I've seen, but I have heard of eight before, 
but seven is the most that I've seen in cubs. And it's very difficult then because the cubs fight a lot over those teats and the mom gets bothered quite often and a lot of nutrients suck from her. But um, generally the average is four. Um, here in the Sabi Sands over the last little bit, it seems like the average is probably, I would say, three. Most of the females that I've seen give birth have had three cubs. So three seems to be quite common as well. But if you read books most of the time, it'll say average four cubs. Um, I think it's time for sleep. Nice bit of milk and now sleeping time. Look at them cuddling up together. So Jake, ooh, difficult one. Um, I think given the current climate, their first taste of meat will be probably, I would say, in about, they're so small still, so I'd say six weeks until they actually start eating again. And what that would be would be very difficult to say. I mean, they would might get... I think if it's anything, it's going to be a larger carcass. So it, uh, normally it's something like a buffalo where she can go, she can suckle them, bring them back to the carcass, and that's where they can get introduced to meat. Um, things like a wildebeest or a nyala or a kudu or even something like an impala generally gets eaten so fast by this pride because of how many mouths there are. Remember, it's five females and six sub-adults, plus generally a Birmingham male is somewhere in that vicinity. And it means they have to have really big carcasses for her to go away and get back to the cubs and, and take them back and still have some meat. So I think a buffalo carcass will be the first one. And hopefully that will be in about, I would say about six weeks until we see them at a carcass. They're still a little bit young for that. But look at that face. Is that not the cutest thing? Look at the little nose and mouth and tiny spotty head. So you can see lion cubs are actually spotty when they're born, and that's just to help with camouflage and to be able to blend in a little bit. But how beautiful is that? It's a pity all the vegetation is there, but that's okay. And still, to see one of them is super special. And look at how it's falling asleep as well. That head is getting heavy. Shame, little one. Are you tired? Oh, there we go. I'm going to fall asleep right here. Full belly, tired eyes and so it's about to sleep now i'm not the only one that's having a baby predator bonanza it seems jamie has joined in too 